Hello everybody, welcome to today's Friday, is it Friday? I believe it is Friday. Friday afternoon edition of Banter Blitz, where you can challenge me to a chess game, a five minute chess game. And then we might play a lovely game of chess, and I might talk about it. You can also talk about it. That's probably... Or maybe you will record what you're saying. I will record what I'm saying, because I feel I have too much knowledge to drop. That there should be a camera in my face at all times, because all these gems would be lost to generations that might come after us if not every single word I say is recorded. And then also all these chess moves, all these genius chess moves that my grandmasterly mind shall produce over all these sessions. Like there's so much to learn. I'm gonna play these moves and then explain why I played these moves, like what's not to like. Let's get started, let's play some dude. Mora Gambit, maybe? Mm, what about the Mora Gambit? Here we, here we are. Look, I found one of the old designs we used to have lying around, which plugs my Twitter handle, where I never write anything. So follow me on Twitter. I will let you in peace. You won't even realize that I'm following you. That you're following me. <laughs> See. This is eloquent stuff. Oh, he's called Mora Gambit. I should have played one C5. Now I feel bad. Mm. Do you have some funky gambits here as well, Mora Gambit? I'll go knight f6, so you can go knight g5. That makes things a little more exciting than bishop c5. Yeah, here we go. I had a feeling, since he's called Mora Gambit, he might like other sharp openings, even though in this line, technically, I'm the gambit here, and he's the... The Gambit Acceptor. I believe that is the correct word. I used to study this. Mm, end of statement. I obviously forgot all there ever was to learn about any of these lines. Supposed to go e4, right? But then after 95, completely out of book, I promise. Queen d4? Why can't I go queen d4? f4, I'm guessing? Is that how this line goes? Hang on, I'm supposed to know something about this. Mm. Did I decide one should just develop pieces here? I can't recall. Sad. Comes with H, like this slow memory loss. <clears throat> In the old days, we would spend nights... No, that's not true. We would spend nights watching movies. Sometimes you would let the engine run. And it would tell you what to do in this position. But now I can't remember. It's very sad. Bishop c5 feels a little funny. To c3 threatening b4. I better come up with some plan fast. Hmm. Or I'm gonna have to come up with a backup plan. Oh, are you watching the show, Mora Gambit? I believe that's probably bad strategy. Because it will cost too much time. I also believe queen e7 is probably bad strategy. For similar reasons. But what's done is done. Hmm. Yeah, it doesn't look like I have a lot of compensation for my pawn. If I'm being perfectly honest, get out prepared here by Mr. Mora Gambit. But then again, some gambiteers, they're not happy being a pawn up. So, I don't think that read is actually accurate. I think most gambiteers, curiously, they're also very happy when they can grab a pawn. They're happy when they can sacrifice one, and they're happy when they can grab one. What they don't like is like dull material equality, where we play for structures and those things. Queen c2, I'm not so sure about. It's sort of asking to get pinned. I'm hoping for some tactics like bishop g4, bishop takes d3, that would favor me. I would not like any tactics that don't favor me. That is my general approach. All right, what's going on here? Hmm. Hmm. Wow, we have a lot of grandmasters in the chat. Peter Heine is in the chat? Someone said PH. Ah oh, no, it's pawn holder. It's probably not Peter Heine. But a grandmaster he is. And I've seen the chess bra himself, Eric Hansen, was stopping by earlier. What an honor to have mm, all these grandmasters stopping by to... <laughs> See, 
my lack of knowledge in what's this called the two night Italian or just the two night the two night defense I don't know I'm not sure Eric knows much about the two night defense he always struck me as more of a one night guy but I could be wrong of course um, as for this position Hmm. I have a feeling by now I should have some compensation. To be perfectly frank, I still have a bit of a lead in development. And there's some tricks that start popping up. Some bishop h2 checks. If queen e3, rook e8 could be a little awkward. So yeah, things are looking all right. Hmm. Hmm. What's up, chat? Do I have to give my speech that I'm assuming everybody that challenged wants to play me, so there's no real need for pointing it out. Also makes the chat a little more boring to read if it's just play me. Um, and Grominu is saying, Jan, pawn down. Is the world coming to an end? I have a feeling the world might be coming to an end, and I'm not sure it's connected with me being a pawn down. But... Yeah, these are probably indicators of a looming apocalypse. I don't even know what apocalypse means, to be perfectly honest with you. What do you want? You want to go knight a3 or you just want to push your a-pawn? Hmm. You do want to go knight a3, but I can take this. Which would rectify this pawn down situation. Dutch Defender is saying, why no stream? That would be a fair question if there was no stream. I'm gonna need somebody to inform me if there really is no screen, stream. If there is no such thing, then all of a sudden all my expert queen grabbing would be in vain. Because no one would see it. And if no one sees that you took a queen, it didn't happen. Is that the accepted reasoning? Um, anyway, my point was queen d3, bishop h2 check. And game over. <clears throat> Alright, looks like the stream is working. Customs broker, you have to challenge me. Challenge me to a five minute game. And play we shall. Long list here. Who shall I play next? I never know these things, so normally I just click randomly on names. Hmm. What about Rodrigo E. Villanueva? Mm -hmm. He plays e4 as well. I feel bad I didn't play c5 last game, so let's do it now. Knight f3, d6 is the move. All the smart guys play nowadays, but then they give you this check and you're already losing your will to live a little bit. We've had this discussion the other day, if one should go a6 first or um, knight f6 first. Knight f6, rook e1, a6, bishop f1 is a line, but after a6, bishop d3, I also don't know what to do. So it's a lose-lose situation for me. I have a feeling it makes some sense. I'm not sure of a lot of sense. <laughs> to target this pawn and I'm not sure B, going b5 I was a little worried about getting hit by a4 but most things I'm saying are probably mainly ignorance see I don't know what to do e5 e6 I'll go e5 just because the structure looks closer to my beloved Spanish structures to me I'm surprised he plays d3 not that it's a bad move but I would have played d4 in one go given the chance now we'll do all these standard moves. He puts his knight on g3. I'll go rook e8, bishop f8, maybe g6. There's bishop g5, interesting. All right, if you want to give me that bishop, I won't argue all that much. I might argue a little, but not that much. <clears throat> all right, Mr. Customs, I'll track you down. Don't you worry. Don't you worry about a thing. 
I'm interacting with the chat here in case you're wondering. Has Jan gone more mental than he usually is? Maybe, but I'm also talking to stuff I read. Talking to stuff I read. Hmm. Hmm. What are we discussing? There's a lot of talk about the Magnus interview with Maurice Ashley. I just saw that because I was reading the chat there as well. And yeah, I don't think it's a big deal. Magnus yeah, won the rapid section and he was probably not that thrilled that he... I don't even know the scores. He didn't win against... Car Yakin today from a good position, right? So I guess that's annoying. But in general, I love it. He was a little salty and he has every right to be. Like, show him some respect. He played a f fantastic tournament. I don't think Maurice meant any disrespect, but it's good that he has his, his edge back and he's clearly upset if things don't go well, even when he's dominating the field. And I think it's a healthy thing for him to have. I'm obviously biased ever since I worked for the guy during the match the World Championship match, but I don't know. I don't think that was out of line. Quite entertaining, actually. Hmm. What am I gonna do here? Can't just take that pawn. I have a feeling I won't be able to hang on to it. Um, let me think. C, D, rook, E8, queen, E8. That's the end of my train of thought. <laughs> okay. I was contemplating if I should go c4 and play for structure or whatnot. But pawn is a pawn, and it's not obvious how he can get it back because after rook e8, queen e8, there's no good square for the bishop to attack the d4 pawn. Like you can do something clumsy like bishop e1, but then I have knight f4 or so rook d8. So it'll look quite pleasant. Hmm, knight e4. Fair enough. Does not instill a lot of fear in my heart either. Miktal is studying live ratings. I don't think that's correct, though. <clears throat> the ratings you're giving. I'm 2640, am I not? Like, whenever my rating is okay, I know about it. If I, like, lose 20 points again, I will say, ah, I'm not really keeping track. But right now, since all my, the last, like, 15 years, probably more, I've moved in this very narrow window between 2610 and 2652. Um, so whenever I'm closer to 2652, I'll feel good about life. When I'm closer to 2610, I'll be miserable. Which, yeah, it's probably not a very good way to live your life. But as they say, happiness is a function of expectations. Do they say that? I have no idea. What's going on here? Are you tricking me, Rodrigo? Are you sneakily double attacking all my pawns? Are you thinking I'm not gonna notice? Maybe you're thinking I will notice, but it will be too late for me to do anything about it. Which could be true. Time to make some active moves myself. The bishop is under attack. After bishop b4, c b4, at least I don't have to deal with the c5 pawn hanging and the h6 pawn hanging anymore. And if he goes, I don't know, bishop c4, I take on f3, bishop e2 looks a bit passive, rook a8, rook a8. So I guess black, white has to go bishop b4, c, b, play that position. That looks quite pleasant for me. <clears throat> he goes bishop e2, a bit tempting to take here, like here. Uh, not sure if it's the best idea I've ever had. Because normally, of course, I don't like sacrificing any of my precious material. But sometimes it's hard to resist. Even for me. 
Hey, hang on. You went bishop takes b4? I could not expect that. I did pre-move bishop f3, which fortunately didn't spoil anything. But yeah, that was surprising. Anyway, what's going on now? Rook e1, bishop e1, and I'm kind of winning, right? Which is good. I like to be kind of winning. Hmm. Rook c8 is a sad, sad move. I should have gone queen f3, but I really didn't want to give him the c5 pawn. I like rook a3. Trying to make use of this rook. But of course, the white position is pretty grim at this point. Weak king. I have these two pretty powerful pawns. I could ask unpleasant questions like, how do you want to react to bishop f8? Or how do you want to react to d3? Maybe both. But d3 he can take, so I don't want that. Bishop f8, he could go b4. Or rook a1. But generally, my position seems to be all right, even though I've been very slow. Then again, so has Rodrigo. What are we talking about? Johnny B. Love is asking, what did you eat today, Jan? It's a good question. I didn't eat that much. Excellent question. I'm sure everybody's really curious. And I have a feeling I didn't get that much food today yet, somehow. I had my... Muesli for breakfast, muesli coffee, probably ate a banana. Then I went to the gym this morning. I had a smoothie on the way to the gym. Then I don't think I really had lunch. I had some small leftover salad thing and one skier. This is sort of yogurt, but healthier than yogurt or whatever. I like skiers. Is that it? Not a lot of food intake today. Good that you bring it up, Johnny. I shall try to do better. And I shall try to checkmate Rodrigo y Villanueva. On h1. That is my plan. And it looks like my plan was seen through. Thanks for the game, Rodrigo. I'm not sure where it went wrong. But probably, yeah. Why go d4? Why give me that pawn? Also in the opening, just play d4 here, no? Looks good for white. Anyway, thanks for the game. Let's play another one. And I promised, I promised something. Lannister always pays his debts. I don't know why I identify so much with the Lannisters. Probably <clears throat> not a very healthy thing for me to do. I just feel I could be part of the Lannister clan. Like I have the hair, I have the <clears throat> moral ambiguity, I have the motivation, the hunger for power. Mm. What else is there that you need? I'm scrolling through my long, long list here. <clears throat> Ambitious Pawn is contemplating the rating system, apparently. <clears throat> I haven't studied this universal rating system, but I thought that one thing that was not really wrong, or where there was nothing to be fixed, was the, what's it called, the feeder rating system. So the, what, this idea to combine Blitz and Rapid and the other into one, it's interesting, but I didn't feel it was strictly necessary because, I don't know, I might be traditionalist, but I grew up with the feeder rating. That's the one we Everybody's always cared about. So I'm not sure if it will change and people will start paying more attention. The Fidi classical rating. I mean, people will start paying more attention to their rapid ratings and blitz ratings and the influence of those things. I have a feeling we're not there yet. And until that, I'm 
yeah, I have mixed feelings about combining everything in one rating. But, hmm, I don't mind that much either. The thing is, I don't really have strong opinions on like chess politics matters. Um, you know how people have opinions? Like normally, I really don't I have to pretend them. So I need some smart guys so I can steal their opinions. That's usually a good thing for me. And what am I supposed to do after bishop g5? I can't make up my mind. I think dc4 is what they mainly do nowadays. But I've always been a fan of playing as passively as possible. Going e6, bishop e7. And have a look around after that. I'm sure there's quite some theory attached to this. Black generally has two ideas to free his position. One is b6 and the other is knight to e4. The timing of b6 you have to be a little careful. For example, if instead of castles I go b6, then bishop b5, say bishop d7, bishop takes c6, followed by knight to e5 and b4 if needed. Looks a bit awkward. While knight e4 is always around, I think bishop b5 is a theoretical move here when I'm supposed to go knight e4. Or was it h6 in the knight e4? Can't remember. Um, but yeah, this is where we are. Now bishop f4, can I take and play queen a5 or maybe queen a5 immediately? I'm tempted to ask some questions. But I'm not sure how it's going to play out. Queen a5, queen b3. Not that clear, is it? Knight d4, knight d4, knight c5. Nah, not really. Weird. Don't know what to do. Sad. <clears throat> Sorry for that I'm making you guys hear my <laughs> internal monologue. Then again, I guess that's the point of Bento Blitz. In the end, I settled on queen a5, queen b3, bishop d7, which is probably not really the way to punish white for what he's done, but it's the best I could think of. Am I worse? I was intending to go knight c3 and b6, but in that, can't say I enjoy that position very much. Feels a bit like some old game Kasparov Anand, where Anand got checkmated after some bishop d3, bishop h7. I'm also very confused why Customs Broker is playing so well with his 1650 rating, but hmm, I should probably not whine all the time if my opponents play well. They're allowed not to give away all their pieces instantly. Even though I would prefer you to give me all your pieces instantly. I will be honest. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I'm not stronger than my opponent. Which normally makes me feel very sad. I'd be weaker. Hmm. Should give myself a little pep talk. Hang in there, Jan. You can do it. You're so gifted. Yay! <laughs> that was sad. Even for my standards, I feel I need this bishop to buy me some time on the queen side. <clears throat> H4, another very grandmasterly move. Mm -hmm. Is he just going to go h6 and checkmate me? Could very well be. I'm not very good at reacting to these h4, h5 plans. Queen e2. He is coming for the poor king. Tending queen g4. F6, can white take? I'm not sure. Let's find out. Bishop f4. Tough to be outclassed. I don't like it much. Hmm. 
Am I still in business? First time customs broker is actually thinking. Let's see what he comes up with. My king is a little weak, but if I don't get checkmated instantly, I could still be all right. Queen c2, I can take, I guess. Queen c6, we'll find out. No time to weigh the big questions here. Just gotta make moves. Hmm. Didn't see Bishop C five, of course, but such is life. Very strong move too. Oh man, I don't know what to do. This whole game, once again, confuses me greatly. Not just a little, confuses me greatly. <clears throat> Back to perfection. What happened to perfection in between? It's all so confusing. Who could ever see through these things? <clears throat> the good thing is, I always know how to find my way to Flagstaff, Arizona. Or do I? Nah, I'm probably once again getting outplayed here. Hmm. Oh. Yeah, I didn't understand that game. Not at all. Not much, I can say. Mm. But yeah, I felt I played well. Mm. I don't understand people. Anyway, let's play another game. Good game, Customs Broker. Mm -hmm. Let's play Alonso Kishano.
Flute Lady saying, shouldn't he beat these low-rated players? I have a feeling I played that game extremely well, to be honest with you. And yeah, that's all I'm gonna, <laughs> I can say about it. Mm -hmm. Let's see what Alonso Kishano has in store. This position... Hmm. I'm thinking now, queen b3 is probably not a great move. Now after bishop e7, if I go e4, my queen will look very silly after knight c6 or even after d6. After d6, knight bd7. So how do I get my pieces out? g3, knight c6, e3? Looks a little artificial as well, I have to admit. That's the best I can see. Hmm. D5. Yes, mm -hmm. I have to take when... I can't really claim much of an advantage after either knight d5 or knight d4, ed knight d5, or even ed5. It shall, shall come down to a similar type of position if black takes here. We get these two pawns staring at each other in the center of the board, where normally the side that can attack the enemy pawn, when, let's say here after knight d4, ed4, bishop e6, I would be the attacker and he would have to defend his pawn with the three pieces. It's not much. And normally the side that can attack the pawn is a tiny bit better. Knight e4 is possible here. Then I guess either bishop e3 or bishop f4, I'm not sure which one. Queen d7, yeah, is probably a more solid way to approach the position. I guess I should try to improve this bishop, which wasn't really doing anything on d2 to e5, or at least this diagonal is the most obvious square that comes to mind. Mm. So far, Alonso Kishano doing very well. Bishop f1, bishop b5 is one idea I could work with. Of course, after bishop f1, he can go a6, but then knight a4 and b6 is a little weak. So, who knows? Knight h5, can I go bishop e5, or is f6 a problem? No, after f6, I at least have bishop c7. Maybe something better. If not f6, e5 felt like a more active square than e3. Hmm, let's go here. Probably black has to take, even though it's fairly horrible after rook e6, because his knight is out of play then after f6. And the d5 pawn is very weak. This did not seem to improve his situation. Queen e6 doesn't work because of bishop d5. So you have to go rook c7. When probably easiest is just to play rook c e1. I can't think about more spectacular solutions, but no need really. This is just hopeless for black. The knight on h5 does not participate. And very bad things will happen on this a2 g8 diagonal. In a minute, I take the t5 and game.
Yeah, this ends the game. Rook e8, d6 is hanging, h5 is hanging. Any rook move anywhere will end the issue fairly quickly. I want to weigh in into the chat discussion, but I shouldn't. So I'll play some more games. <laughs> Who shall I play? What about Raul Tol? Raul Toledo? Because on this show, we do not discriminate by rating. We play everybody. Raul Toledo from Spain. A Toledano, sorry, I misread. Raul Toledano. I thought you were Raul and you were from Toledo. Could not have been more wrong, but I shall play the Karokan anyway. Blimblam the core block in the chat. He's. What are you complaining about? What has been happening here? I go on a little trip and come back, and there's like five banters with Jan. Yeah! I'm not that busy doing commentary or video series or anything else. And with the. What's called Paris Grand Chess Tour running, where I'm not doing any commentary. I thought at least I could do some banters, crush some of you, and see where that takes us. Queen a5, Queen a6 is a typical enough maneuver in these positions. Mm. Just, you know, challenging the active queen on d3 and general. I'm not sure if that's accurate, but the thinking is that in the end game, Black's good structure and quote unquote good bishop should be more important than the white space advantage. Even though, as I said, I'm not sure that is correct. H3, I believe, is a mistake because now after knight f5, he can't go g4 because I would take and the rook on h1 would be hanging. Well, if you prepare g4, I will fix the structure with h4 here. And now my knight is fairly untouchable on f5, while white can never get his g4 in. So h3 you have to be very careful about, and if you're not sure it's going to work, it's better to prepare it, play slowly with g3 first, and then see what happens. Still, nothing too bad has happened. I have to think about what to do with this knight, and since it's annoying me there, I'll just reroute it by a b8, d7, or maybe, maybe not d7, but probably d7. And Raoul insists on g4, but sometimes you gotta be careful of what, what you wish for, because now he lost the h3 pawn, and there's some trouble on the third rank. Knight e2 only move in order not to lose a piece, but yeah, did not help Raoul's chances very much. Into the gloam is happy with all these new Bantablet sessions. Thanks, Gloamy. Can I call you Gloamy? No, that sounds weird. Mm. I still... The Bantablitz count, I'm sure I've done more than 100, but the official count on YouTube still says like this is 80, 84 or something. So I feel like I should get to 100 soon. And I shall not rest. That's a lie, I'm gonna rest plenty before I get 100 Bantablitzes. As for this game, I will win because my knights are much stronger than this bishop and I'm a pawn up. My rooks are also more active. So things are looking pretty good. Not sure how to cash in the rook e3. Clearing the h file for the other rook looks like a decent starting point. Starting point, even though this is a good maneuver. I don't like this knight coming to c5 or a5. So I'll try to Restrict it a bit. But kudos to Raul, who's been fighting very well out of a fairly desperate situation. Hmm. 
<laughs> Sometimes when they have one bad piece and one good piece, it helps to exchange the good piece. So you're left with one good piece against one bad piece. Simplify. I might have, yeah, as usual, might have gotten a bit carried away with the self-praise and all those things. And Rauto, in the meantime, has found counterplay. Oops. Mm -hmm. Risky pre-move, maybe. Mm -hmm. but okay, well, it's kind of likely he would move his bishop. Why are we both so low on time? Was this a three minute game? Sometimes I don't pay attention and I only realize it's a three minute game. Like a hundred moves in. This could be one of these cases. Yay, I won on time, which is the sweetest a victory can taste. I, I know I'm not making much sense. I try, but it doesn't always work. Back to my long list of people that want to crush me, hurt my feelings. A lot of new faces here. Always good to see that. Hope you guys enjoy your premium premiumitis. What was I looking for? I have a feeling that, of course, I could be wrong. That me scrolling through this list is not as fun as it might look like for the rest of y'all so i'll just click on the next name igor cavalera 2572 from ecuador here we go what are we discussing the good old slav actually well i already played c4 but um, I never know what to do in this position. Let's take. The exchange slab never gets old. People normally prefer it without the knight on f3 already. But I think even with the knight on f3. It's not supposed to give anything theoretically. But chances for an opening advantage are no worse than in like other normal lines against the slav. Than in 4 knight c3, dc4. And so on. But it's... It's a little limited, the nature of the play, because the pawn structure is so fixed that it's not necessarily for every game use. But once in a while, I enjoy good old exchange slav as much as the next guy. h3, just so I don't have to worry about knight h5 at every possible juncture. b5, I'm normally happy to see them play b5 so early here. Even though I normally don't have a clue how to react. But it does weaken some squares on the queen side. This maneuver I'm going for is a little long-winded and maybe too ambitious here. But I'm trying to reroute my knight to b3. Where it would expose the weaknesses created by this b5 action. At some point I should castle and, you know, finish development, all that good stuff. But, like my position. <laughs> now he goes bishop d6, fair enough. Guess I should take it. 
and keep my eyes on the price on the C5 square. At some point Black could go E5, but it would also would not solve all his problems necessarily, because well, he will be left with a weak D pawn. And yeah, it's not that fun to play. Knight C5, he could take and go E5. Does that bother me? I think it bothers me enough to not do it. Maybe this. Looks a little too sophisticated. Normally, playing too subtle is not a great idea. So probably I should have played some more natural move first, like Queen E2 or Queen D2 or whatever. Rook C2, yeah. Looked a little too clever for its own good. Because you don't know yet if you want the rook on c2 or the queen or whatever. Just a weird move. Doesn't change the nature of the position, fortunately. But might have lost like half a tempo that I could have used for other purposes. And after his slightly suspect opening play, Igor Cavalera has actually played well. Kept his position intact. It's a bit of a thankless defensive job. But someone has to do those as well. Not sure that made sense. Queen b6, is it time to go a5? Probably. He's gonna return to d6 and I have to think of something to do. The old conundrum. Knight c5, he's gonna take rook c5, knight c6. Well, I can do that. And keep chipping away. Earlier I didn't like it because he, there was some e5 tactic whenever I did this. But now I don't think that tactic is around. Bishop c8, interesting. Hmm. Very resilient, Mr. Igor Cavalera. That's not a member of Sepultura, right? Now I let the bishop out. He's playing well. I'm not playing that well, which is often a recipe for problems. Ugh. I've mishandled this a bit because now after f6 the bishop can break free, which I don't want. Silly me. My advantage is almost gone, which makes me very angry. <laughs> that wasn't very convincing, was it? He goes e5, which is possible, of course. I was expecting bishop h5, but e5 is also a decent move, obviously. Hmm. Let's go for some action. But yeah, I've bungled this, or in the sense of I've lost all my advantage. And I really had a very pleasant position strategically. But Igor's played well, and yeah, I didn't punish him. So these things can sometimes happen. Time to focus. Stop the whining for at least five seconds. Let me not whine and yeah, look at the position. Hmm. Bishop g6, d, e, f, e, queen e2, d4. Because bishop h5, also legal. Just cluelessly staring at the position, staring it down. I don't really want to weaken my poor king. Like I was thinking about bishop c4, bishop f3, g, f, queen g6 check. Even if I win a pawn, it didn't feel worth it somehow. <clears throat> Still very little, if anything, really. I think I might have blundered knight d4 there, I'm not sure. Rook c8, but it looked a little fishy. 
<clears throat> anyway, not the time to win any brilliancy prizes. It's the time to play faster and hopefully better than our very strong opponent. And by our, I mean my. <laughs> Igor! Doing the business. Nope, don't blunder, Jan. I know you want to blunder all your pieces. Refrain yourself. Restrain yourself. Refrain yourself. I shouldn't try to speak English while I'm playing chess. From now on, only Benzo Blitz is in German. Because my English prowess is getting worse by the minute. As is my time. See, I want to blunder something every move. My natural instinct is to blunder all my pieces away. Then I stumble upon a move that hopefully didn't blunder all my pieces away. But it's really just dumb luck if it doesn't happen at this point. No time to think. I used to be fast and bad. Now I'm slow and not great either, which is not ideal. Drama, baby. Can I being checkmated? I'd prefer to checkmate you first, sir. I'll be honest with you. I don't enjoy getting checkmated. I do enjoy checkmating. Which probably is a preference many people have. But you never know. This was a very tense game. Igor Cavalera played extremely well. Um, yeah, only here. I sort of got lucky that because it could really be either king first but this seemed to work g6 queen d4 and threatening checkmate here turn between the knight but yeah very good game by igor cavalera after i had a very good position of the opening am i saying very good a lot i guess i am hmm. all right next game what about vbo Are you with us, VBO, from Italy? Goes e4. And why not Fianchetto, to your bishop? Mainly because you're giving up the center, which you could have fought for by playing 1e5 or 1c5. But sometimes we all need a little fun and relax a little from the stressful mainline good openings and just play some nonsense. Nonsense is strong. Just play the modern. Fianchetto, the bishop, play on the flanks. Try to undermine the white center with timely little jabs. I don't know. I've never been much of a modern player, even though I played it throughout bits and pieces of my chess upbringing from like 13 till 15, I would guess. Played a lot of g6. This position, I'm not sure. I have a feeling I'm a tempo down compared to lines I know. Like where the white bishop would already be on e3, which is probably not a good thing for me. But what to do? So aggressive. Fibio wants to checkmate me directly. And who am I to blame him? For his cruel but very understandable intentions. Knight of 8, not the move you are dreaming of playing. But I, you're also not dreaming of having a knight sit on e6. So I felt like there was limited choice. Hmm. 
Um, uh, queen f3 is what he wants. Now I understand. And I should probably rush with h6. So that queen f3 can be met with hg. If this knight goes there, the queen can't go there. I think that is sound logic. Hmm. Being challenged today. Everybody's playing very well. <laughs> but yeah, some people play differently than other people. It's very easy to tell when someone's playing well or when someone's just doing things I don't understand at all. Those are normally different categories. Vibio is playing well. But he's a pawn down, which I shall keep until the end of days. I think that's probably a realistic goal. And I have these five pawns here. I quite like this pawn, Falongs. I have to figure out where I want to put my king. I think I'll start by putting it here, begging for knight sacrifices on g5 or e5, but they don't really seem to work. So this seemed like the best square available. BSA, as we say in the business. Not too thrilled to move my knight away from f8, because it was defending the soft spots on e6 and g6. But at some point it would be friendly to let my rook on h8 contribute to the game, I guess. Fubar2016 is asking, into the Glong, why do you think Germans speak English well? Do Germans speak English well? I'm not sure that's the case. Um, this is not meant as a thinly veiled brag. In general, I think the smaller the country, the better the English, because they don't dub movies. So in Scandinavia or Holland, where most TV is not dubbed, people speak a little better English than in the bigger places, like Germany, Spain and France, where it's not dubbed. And again, we all learn English, or in my case, from 5th grade till 13th grade. So that's 8 years of school. And it's hard to escape the beauties of American pop culture. And sometimes even the less beautiful need of having to act, interact with other people that might not speak your first language. So, yeah, I think the level of English and German, Germany is decent, but it's probably a little worse than some neighboring countries like Holland, like Denmark and so on. Oh, another pawn? This is the best day of my life. Am I gonna lose my queen? That would slightly ruin the pawn grabbery for me. But one should not overthink these pawn grabs. Just take the pawn. What's the worst thing that could happen? I could lose a queen and lose the game, but I would still have taken the pawn. And the other pawn. Hmm. He does want to take my queen. I'm starting to get a vibe of queen robbery plans by Vibio here. And I miss queen d3, I have to admit. I thought he was going to go rook b1, queen c2, rook fc1, queen f5. And I thought it was in good shape. But this is a better move. Got to be honest, because it also introduces knight h4 ideas that could slightly annoy me as well. So I'll just keep moving my queen to random squares and hope for the best. Whoa, 95 check. Burning the bridges. No more Mr. Nice Guy by VBO. He's saying, I've seen enough. I'm not gonna wait around patiently while you're trying to extricate, extricate tough word, your queen from its exile. I shall checkmate you right here, right now. I don't think it's gonna work though. 
and objectively I've probably been in the driver's seat for a while here, even though, I don't know, you never know when your queen is stuck behind enemy lines, all kinds of things could go wrong. Anyway, thanks for the game, VBO, interesting stuff for sure. And once again, it's painfully slow scrolling or scrolling through a list of challenges. Not even halfway, even though I've scrolled quite fast actually. So many challenges, so many enemy. How am I gonna crush all of you? It's gonna be tough because you have strength in numbers. What about the big boss, 1324? Not his rating, just a number he chose to attach to his name. I don't know, is that humor, 1324? Is that like the Ramones introduction to a song when they're, they've had a few drinks too many, they can't say 1234 anymore? Or is 1324 your German rating? You're just overperforming on chess 24 where you have 1868. Not, not the case for me. Like, 3085 is my true playing strength. That looks like Big Boss. Ah, I was just gonna say, he's not here. Then he shows up out of nowhere. <laughs> we are playing good old London system. C6, solid, bit rare in this situation, but nothing really wrong with it. And I'll transpose to territory closer to my heart well now it feels like we'll get some version of whatever this is gonna be queen's gambit declined after bishop e7 or semi slav whatever you want to call it in general if black committed to c6 in these positions white is a little bit better a6 is sort of begging me to go c5 then I shall. The point is you go c5 after a6 because now b6 lost in strength since, it, since there's no more c, b, a, b. You normally don't go c5 unless there's a special reason. If black doesn't go a6 so early, even though I'm not even sure that statement is true. But after a6 it gains in strength a little bit, is what I'm saying. He goes b6 anyway, which is sensible. And these structures, they're, they're complicated for me to understand. Sometimes white is better even after black gets c5 and cd4 in. Sometimes he's not. That's all I know. But I can't really think of anything too clever to do. So I'll probably just castle and allow him to get his c5 business and hope I'm still better after that. Nah, I'll fight a little bit. Change my mind. I was gonna give up and then I thought let's put up a little fight. He can still take and go c5. I'm trying to scare him by attacking the pawn on a6 even though I can't really take since after c5, bishop takes a6, rook a8, wins material. That would be very sad. Queen b6, the strategically consistent move to play would be b4. Hope it works tactically, but I think it does. The point is after queen b4, queen b4, bishop b4, rook b1, there are pieces hanging along the b-file, and you can't keep them all. Because rook a8 preparing a5, but I can also prepare for a5. Two can play that game. The rook b1 a5 takes once again. The bishop on b7 is in trouble. And strategically, the black position is very dangerous. Now, if I manage to get in rook fc1, knight e5, whatever, consolidate, he will suffer. What are we discussing in the chat? Chat lagging a bit? Hmm. Prison Mike is asking for something good on Netflix. What have I been watching on Netflix? I watched this new stand-up special. What's the dude's name? He had a weird name. Does stand up for the first time. That was funny. I haven't really been watching Rory Scoville, that's his name, does stand up for the first time. It was surprisingly funny. Or at least my kind of sarcastic, world-weary humor. So I enjoyed Rory Scowl. And I haven't been watching a lot of series on Netflix recently. 
so I need a recommendation myself. I was told the Keepers is good, but I haven't really gotten around to it yet. Well, Big Boss 1324 found a good maneuver here. Well, I'm discussing Netflix and I'm no longer sure how much better I am. Because now A5 might be coming. If it does, I'm still okay, but I should probably have used the time to bring my knight to a better square. All right, so what can we do about it? Nothing. Nah, it doesn't look like. Sad. This is very often a very good construction for black after this rook got out of the way. Put the bishop on e8, defends the f7 pawn. It's not messing with the connection of the two rooks. So big boss 1324 has done very, very well after a bad opening. I keep saying that after every game. Probably what it means is I'm good in the opening and play not so well after that. But here, now that he exchanges a pawn, he's still slightly worse, but really far cry from the position he used to have. I don't think black can take on b4 because of knight d3. Uh, yeah, knight e4 is sensible. I will reshuffle my knight somewhere, probably throw in some f3 first. But kudos to Big Boss 1324, also playing well. Into the Gloam says, I teach English for a living and I've been to Germany. So many people I met were fully fluent or at least could carry on a conversation, impressed me. Yeah, most people will, um, will be able to talk to you in English for sure. As I said, we learn for many years in the school. I'm being asked if I've seen 30 reasons why, 13 reasons why. I've actually watched that. And yeah, I got hooked. It's good kid, kid actors. And yeah, the personalities were very believable. But still more of a show for teenagers, I would guess. And it's, I felt a little uneasy with the glorifying suicide kind of thing, which it seemed to do. So I don't know. I had mixed feelings about 13 reasons why. But yeah, for some reason. I've seen all of those. I've heard from many people now that Better Call Saul season three is very good. I don't know, I gave up somewhere in the depth of the, what's called, scent water case in season two. But I've heard this many times, so maybe it's time to revisit it. I did watch American Gods. I haven't seen the season finale. Yet, but yeah, I wasn't really into it. Big Boss, after playing well, is now, I don't know, trying to get a little too creative for my taste with this h6 g5. I'm not sure what that's about. But if he wants to weaken his position further, I shall not stand in his way. So I'll also just move around and see what he can come up with. So far he's played very well once again. <laughs> Wish some of these games were a little easier. Shouldn't I... Be a favorite once in a while. This time I'm not implying anything at all. He's just played a good game. Um, there's a thin line with the implication game. <laughs> I want to checkmate you. Queen c2 and queen h7. That is my plan. Hang on. Should I pre-move that? Probably. Well, queen, queen h7 wouldn't really want to run away. So I can't pre-move that. Johnny B. Love is wondering if I'm going to watch the Tour de France. Nah, I don't think I will. I used to watch in the old days when we had Jan Ulrich, Piano Ries. But somehow, yeah, it's like... Um, yeah, it's, it's been hard being a cycling fan with all the Lance Armstrong backlash and so on. So nowadays I have no idea what's going on. I did win on time. I managed to pose some problems finally with this queen c2, queen b1. But shout out to Big Boss 1324 who played excellently. Mm. I like winning and then being gracious, complimenting my opponents for excellent play. But he really did play very well. Mac Mole. Why is everybody so strong? Next game, lowest rated player I can find. I promise. 2400. 
and 06. Not just 24 0, 0. He has these six points as well. Bishop b4 is one of these moves where I never know what to do at all. So I'll just play some random moves and hope I'm not lost after the opening. You can go a3, e3, queen b3, knight f3. There's so many things you could do. e3, do you will you checkmate me with some queen a5? It's possible. No, no, he has different intentions. Also very sensible intentions, actually. To just exchange this bishop with bishop f5. And I can't say I can claim very much. You, normally you can never claim very much if black manages to exchange his light square bishop in this Carlsbad structure. He's typically in decent shape. I'm trying to argue that in this particular case, since the knight is on e7, the bishop on b4, I can go maybe go for a quick f3, e4. My position is still playable, but I'm not really sure. I'm buying what I'm selling myself here. I can lie to you people, but I can't lie to myself. Probably I can. We all lie to ourselves every day, right? How else do you keep getting out of bed? Bishop d6. Yeah, I got nothing. Like, to either share with you or chess wise. Now I got in my e4 now. Well, there are similar theoretical lines where both these bishops disappear. Sometimes you can hope for a little something. I wasn't sure about knight g6, but still, of course, it's very little. At least I have a plan. I can try to get in some e5, f4, pawn avalanche, even though it has to be well prepared, because after, let's say, play some move, knight d7, I go e5, he goes queen e6, I go f4, he would just play f5, and I don't think white has anything there. So, some work still to be done. F6. Hmm. Is this a good move? It's double edged. I'm ruining my own structure, of course, but I feel like since he hasn't castled yet, there could be some trickery. Sorry, not since he hasn't castled yet, since he hasn't developed his knight yet, could be some trickery on this diagonal. Maybe. And therefore, it might be worth doing some damage to my structure. Like queen d5, knight 2 to c3. Queen f7, f, f5, or knight d6, queen e6, f5. I'll think about it when we get there. But I thought there were some, some options. He goes queen d8, which allows me to play queen b3, or f5, knight e7, knight f4. I think I'll go with that. Knight e5 is also legal, but then queen b3 is quite awkward. Mm. And yeah, as I said, I, my structure is not great, but my knights are very, very jumpy. Knight e6, knight c5, knight d6, queen b3 is a threat. So hopefully the initiative will be worth all the crimes I have committed with respect to my pawn structure. Okay, how do I win now? Queen b3, king h8. Mm. Oh, hang on. I can start with this, maybe, no? Not sure. That was the proper move order. I just got excited because I spotted. I can also put my queen on g3 after knight f6, g, f, I have some queen g3 options. So. I have to figure out how to do this, but it feels winning. Position smells very nice. Mm -hmm. Queen a5, that's very far away from home. Now queen g3 should get the job done because after knight f5 i have rook f5 and the queen on a5 is hanging wow 
yeah, any other move loses to knight f6 or queen g7. So yeah, this should be over. My opponent is knight f5, rook f5, queen f5, queen g7. Yeah, nothing to do for Magmole. Maybe knight g6 is the most resilient. But then I have many tempting options. Knight 4 to c5, knight d6, knight f6, fg. But knight 4 to c5 looks easiest. And yeah, Magmole resigns. Not much to do here. Thank you for the game. Okay, I told you, looking for the weakest player I can find. And I mean zero offense, just saying I want to give the lower, lower rated players a chance as well. And I played Jean-Paul Sartre the other day, so you're not qualified this time around. A lot of very high rated dudes here. Where are my lower rated players at? Let's play KC Chess C6. See how it goes. Is that a panda? Big designer fan? He goes E4. I shall play the Sicilian. <laughs> What are we talking about in the chat? Chess Pac-Man, Grandmaster Sadora is here. What else is going on? Lefty John saying, he means me. Lefty John, ah, uh, yeah. Close, close. Hmm. <laughs> Jean-Paul Sartre, I remember our game from the other day. What else is happening? Chess Pac-Man, I can't play you every show. This is a Bantablitz show to give all the premium members a chance to play. Not a chance to play Chess Pac-Man every day. And I'm being told I missed Lefty. Sorry Lefty John. I scrolled for as long as I could. I'll play Lefty as well. Lefty has been around a lot. Let's play lefty. I have, I have a feeling I've been going on for a long time, but maybe not. 6.30, nah. We still have a bit of time. Hmm. F46, he goes queen d3. Nothing particularly wrong with it. But it's not the square I would choose, like queen d2 feels more natural, on d3 you could get hit by knight b4 in the future. So it feels a little artificial, nothing wrong with it, but yeah, if you warm up the queen to prepare long castles, I'd rather have it on d2. Still, as I said, if I move, and I'm, I'm honestly slightly worried that I could get checkmated here, because yeah, I don't feel that much at home in Sicilians. Mm -hmm. Ooh, it's very scary. What are you doing to me? KC chess. C6. I don't dare to castle into it. But I don't like my position. At first I was all critical of queen d3, but now I'm all scared. I really lack a bit of experience in these Scheveningen structures. G3, I'm happy to see. I was more worried about g4, to be honest with you. Just go g4, threaten g5. If I go h6, go h4, crush me. Well, g3 feels a little slow. Hmm. Rook g1. Are you preparing g4? Hmm. 
feels like KC chess, C6. Lost a bit too much time, like with his G3, then Rook G1, then G4. Now he's gonna be in trouble because E4 is weak. And if the knight moves, first of all, the knight doesn't have a great square, but if it were to move anywhere, let's say B1, Bishop E4, and there's problems on C2. Looming already. I'm overusing the word looming, I know, but I, yeah, I run out of expressions to say the same thing in the near future. On the horizon, impending, coming up. G5 is the best move. Kudos to KC chess. He's still in trouble after B, C, G, F, C, B. Or can I do better? I don't think I can, unfortunately. I'd like to do better. But not gonna be able to do it. So what haven't we discussed? We haven't talked NBA draft, even though, of course, I could pretend to be a draft expert, but I've never seen a single game or even very few YouTube clips of any of these people that got drafted into the NBA. So, I don't know. Feels like, well, it's hilarious to watch the New York Knicks and the gross incompetence of a legend like Phil Jackson. It's kind of sickening. And the Bulls are also, I don't know what's going on there. All kinds of very weird things. But yeah, the NBA, they're smart. There's no games, but they still keep us fans very, very engaged with lots of stories, lots of action, lots of content. So yeah, a lot to learn there from the National Basketball Association. Mm, what else is there? No, I've been, yeah, I've been reading people's lists about the 25 best movies of this millennium so far, which I think I talked about the other day. I feel like I have a lot of movies catching up to do. Mm -hmm. I don't think I'm enough of a movies connoisseur to make my own list, but I should probably start working on it nonetheless. Then again, I don't know. People might question my maturity levels if the list is like Dodgeball, Anchorman, Kung Fu Hustle, Step Brothers, Jackass 2. Borat. Um, no, I need some serious movies in there. I need to like throw in, oh, a serious man, Coen Brothers movie. Um, or Moonlight, Moonlight touched me. Or, yeah, I don't know. I need some smart movies in there to not lose all of my street cred. And then I can sneak in another, I don't know. Mm. What movies did I like? Maybe I should start there. It's so hard to tell which movies were in this century. It's probably not that hard to tell, but one has to find out. Probably not the best spot to start thinking about my list now. I watched a good movie recently called The Gift. It's a bit of a low budget thriller. I guess it's a thriller with Jason Bateman. It was excellent. Kept me hooked all the way. Very creepy performance by Joel Edgerton, even though I don't think he's the bad guy necessarily. But very, very creepy in that movie. The whole look, the earring, the... No offense to people with earrings. Shout out to Peter Spiller. Um, the badly dyed hair he has and his whole mannerisms. Like this Joel Edgerton in general, I think, is a very underrated actor. Very good guy. I'm being outplayed here by K, C chess, C6, but I'll win on time, which of course is the sweetest of victories. He could have gone E5 and then taken my G7 pawn. He has a different plan, but his plan will not work. Exchange is an exchange. And I won on time. Yay me. All right. Two more games. One against Lefty, because I promised. And one against one of you evil, strong players. Who of you evil, strong stars are here? So many. Silence. 
after this, I will probably yeah, go through the games of day three of the Paris Grand Prix, rewatch the Magnus interview, and do the things I've been doing, like 12, 13 minutes, highlight highlights of the day, kind of wrap up video in English and German. Then it's weekend. Can't wait for the weekend to begin. Hmm. What else is there? We're playing Chuck from Austria. My apologies. What is this line? Knight c6 and then an early e d4. I haven't seen this move order before. I'm sure e4 is fine when I guess black is nothing better than g6 trying to transpose to some sort of king's Indian. But g3, bishop g2. Asking this knight the question immediately also seems pretty decent. Knight e5, fair enough. But the thing is, I could go for something more drastic like f4 already. The thing is, if white just gets all his pieces out in such a position, gets b3, bishop b2, queen d2, rook d1, he's seriously better because black struggles getting his pieces out equivalently. Is that a word? Whatever. And yeah, white controls more of the center. So it's not a fun situation to be in. And I would not recommend playing this way with the black pieces. Of course, black is solid, whatever, rook d8, bishop f8. I'm not gonna win immediately. But it's not a nice position to play. Here, after he puts his bishop on h5, I should probably jump at the opportunity to grab his bishop. After I accomplish that mission, I can try to win some pieces, maybe with <clears throat> pushing my f pawn up the board. Bit double edged to go after this bishop directly, but it's probably good. He has to go knight d7, then f5, bishop h5, and I can decide if I want to go g4, cash in immediately, or if I feel I have time for some more subtle prep, pre preparatory prep move. Guillaume FL says, when you don't talk for 30 seconds, I feel like the sound is down. Yeah, normally I talk. Actually, too much. I think that's, this is a problem of mine. I'm being serious. I'm not very comfortable with silence. And this was excellent advice. Not that I'm really trying to become a comedian, but excellent advice from, I think, one of these Dave Chappelle interviews where he said, the big trick is to be comfortable with silence. And he's mastered that. And so I should shut up a little more, is what I'm trying to say. Chuck is probably quite happy here that he got rid of his terrible bishop and now there's some holes around my king. But a piece is a piece, so if I am being attentive, I should. I should be much better here. Still, always got to be careful. Jumpy horses. Weak king. I have to be very cautious. M. Hansen 23 says, I thought the ending of the gift in the gift was kind of predictable. Yeah, I agree. I wasn't a huge fan of the ending, but I thought the road till the end was, yeah, full of suspense, beautifully acted. What is this, queen e3? That's like resigning. You can't exchange queens when you're a piece down. That does not make sense to me. What are you doing, Chuck? I'm not saying your position was good, but the queen exchange... <laughs> Why do I instantly blunder an important pawn? This is this is gonna tilt me. <laughs> I'm, I'm still much better, I think. But this will tilt me greatly. I'm telling you already. Why would I give that pawn? Very upsetting. Normally, once I go all condescending, like how dare you exchange queens? create that crime against the laws of chess, then I'll blunder something instantly. Note to self. 
be slightly less condescending. Just slightly. Because what's the fun of banter words if I can't banter? As I said, the good news for me is that I'm still seriously better. But the sadness that I gave up that pawn will overweigh these good news. Evans Gambit is saying, can wait or can't wait to see what the engine thinks. No, I'm still much better, even after I blundered that pawn, but I should really not do that. Mm. Oof, now I'm not much better anymore. <laughs> I really have to stop blundering or everything. Rook G3 check would have been a bit of a pro. One blunder seldom comes alone. Hmm. While I'm busy steaming, I should at least find a way to still win this game. Because I'd steam even more if I didn't win. Is this a way? Hmm, not that clear. G2, can you do anything to me? Probably not, actually. That's two one move blunders in one game. The f5 pawn and then the g4 bishop. Those are normally too many blunders. Not sure about rook d6, if I actually want to do this. I don't really have to. Decisions. Hmm. I'm thinking about it because of rook e2, knight e2, which is winning for white, but once again, you need some sort of technique, which I have not really been displaying so far. Um, what else can I do? Is this better, maybe? Also gives him a bunch of passers. <clears throat> but I was taught that three minor pieces are better than a rook. And I will not linger in that belief another sentence that will not enter the history books of sense making. Um, oh, give me. Yeah, dodged a few bullets there after, yeah. I had a winning position very early on out of the opening, like around here. And I started giving away a lot of my pieces. All right, last game, I promise I will play Lefty John if Lefty is still around. He shall get crushed with no mercy. Here he is, Mr. Lefty. How are you feeling on this fine Friday evening where I'm from? Probably not evening where you're from. <clears throat> Thanks, Dutch Defender. Dutch Defender is already waving goodbye. Lefty goes e4, knight c6. Most people just play knight f3, allowing e5. But I always thought d4 has to be more principal move. Now, yeah, you can go e5 when knight f3 would transpose to the scotch, but I think d takes e. 
knight e5, knight f3 is a little more challenging, or even d e knight e5, f4. The reason most people don't play d4 is because they're afraid of 2 d5, but then knight c3 or e5 feels a bit better for white. Bishop d6, can you do that, lefty? Looks a little artificial, wouldn't you say? Blocking the development of your queen side with your bishop there. Not saying it's bad. I kind of am saying it's bad. Um, maybe I should have taken immediately and gone f4. But knight c3 feels like a decent move to make as well. Hmm. I told you, Evans Gambit, that I was much better even after the blunder. How dare you question my judgment? Nah, actually, you should always question people's judgment. That is an important way to improve in chess. Just think about stuff yourself. I'm thinking about how I can crush Lefty John here. Because he's already committed some sins. Some mild sins. Could go knight e5, bishop e5, queen d5, but then bishop c3, b c. Let's do it. Let's see how Lefty handles it. Even though, yeah, I'm not sure this was best. After takes, takes. Let's say rook b8. I thought maybe queen e5 check could be a little awkward to meet. That's not the end of the world, even king of eight. C6 is also possible. I somehow liked rook b8 better because c6 is also weakening some dark squares. Now, you know how I roll. I like to grab the pawns. Grab them by the pawns. After queen f6, I guess I have this. He takes on e4, which is fair enough, but now it's gonna be hard to defend that rook after any move, really. Bishop e3 or bishop e2. Not sure which one. Now it's very hard to defend the rook. What I was gonna say is after queen f6, I have this typical tactic, bishop h6 without taking, threatening to take, and then go bishop g7. Uh, against which there was fairly little to do. Or I believe so at least. Well now, yeah, the game is of course kind of over since I got, I got my rook. And Pizaz won rated 1846 is criticizing me for playing the weak 1300s. I don't discriminate. I... <clears throat> I'm trying to play all ratings on this show. And I'm aware I'm often a favorite. Then again, I'm also a favorite against most 1800 players. And I'm not sure if it's more instructive to play the higher rated game players. I feel for the lower rated players. It might be more instructive sometimes to play the lower rated. But yeah, it's hard to please everybody, so I'm just... I just do whatever I like. That is the uh, didactic, is that the word? Approach to this program. I'll just do whatever and see what happens. Queen g6, let's go here. Hmm. Point is, if he takes here, queen g8 check is unpleasant. Well, if he takes on g2, long castles, followed by rook g1 will also ask some serious questions. <laughs> Mr. Lefty is in trouble. Mr. Lefty has listened to the podcast Shit Town. Or is it just S-Town? Because you can't say shit. I think it's called Shit Town. Just as I have. I had mixed feelings about it. It's very... You feel dirty listening to it somehow. It's... I don't know. It's meant to be very respectful, liberal point of view. But it's still sort of exposing or... It felt like it was slightly invasive and looking down on this... Intrusive is the word I'm looking for, not invasive. And looking down on this small town culture and the dude. So I felt creepy. 
listening to it. Of course, I listen to it in one setting. It's very, very good, very, very well made, very addictive. But yeah, I had mixed feelings about it. It's very, as I said, very, very good. But it's like it felt slightly, ugh. Mm. This sensation you get. I don't know if you have this in other countries when you watch German reality TV, Frauentausch, and so on. <laughs> Lefty is asking, should I resign now? And no, uh, whenever you want, I shall reply. <laughs> um, it won't change <clears throat> all that much. And Lefty does resign. Thanks for the game. What was I doing? I was giving my weird, not thought out review of S-Town. It's very good, but it felt a bit like watching Frauentausch. Uh, German viewers will understand what I mean. Reality TV, where you watch it to feel better about yourself. And yeah, you're moral superiority over the people that are being covered. Even though I don't think that was the intention and the protagonist, I'm not gonna spoil it, is a very complex, interesting human being. But yeah, it felt strangely intrusive to me. I can't really phrase it. Anyway, I think I've talked about this before. Just made me think, Lefty John made me think of it. So this brings us to the end of our little banter program. Thank you guys for partaking as usual my apologies for not being able to play against everybody i will keep cranking out these shows so that i get a chance to play all of you eventually um that's it for today thanks for watching bye